Hi all, my name is Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. This is part two of the DR SSTC show controller build. And today we're taking a look at this very awesome project by Max Soitberg of the high voltage forum.net. And he made this incredible product that we can just quickly browse, browse down through the thread here. And we can see here how he built it into a aluminum enclosure and it really takes up a very few parts as it's built around some de development kits from Texas Instruments along with some next gen touch displays as we saw in part one. And if we just have to take a quick glance on the key features, it is truly something uh, packed with a lot of features. It is completely open source. It is easy to build that you can actually do this build without doing any soldering. It has the ability to control up to six independent Tesla coils, play 16 voices of MIDI, polyphony, and you can use advanced stereo features, you can set hard limits for each coil, you can actually plug in some lightsabers with Wi-Fi modules to simulate fighting with lightsabers. So there's just so many nice features built into this uh, product here. So he actually did shorten down the thread because this was a very, very long one uh, as he wrote much of this information into a wiki on the GitHub page. The whole setup on how to get MIDI into the controller can either be done via some software and then make some MIDI to serial connection to the uh, microcontroller or you can also install a standard 5-pin MIDI input plug and do it that way. He also gives a lot of suggestions on what software to use and which MIDI font to use and all these very, very nice details that you will not find in many other places. So let's just take a look at his build here and we can see it is very straightforward. What we have here is the touch display. The black box is a just regular USB power bank. The red board is the Tiva microcontroller development kit and then we have the output optical inputs on the perf board up here and then we have two USB inputs for programming and connection to the MIDI playing computer. So let's jump straight on to the wiki page. I will browse through the whole wiki page here just quick to get some of the key features and show some of it because we will have to jump back and forth and perhaps in some uh, later on videos uh, go into more details of some of the interface, how that handles some of the extensions. So for now this video is just about getting it programmed and what software we need to do that and getting it up and running. So the whole getting started here has a first a list of what hardware can we do, then there's a minimum, minimum, minimum viable setup in order to just get it running. And then we have the options that we will quickly browse, browse through. And then there is points on how to do the firmware flashing, then the user interface. So let's first take a look into the minimum viable setup. There are links everywhere to the releases, which could be a bit hard to find at some of the first uh, pages on the GitHub, but that has all been fixed now. So you can see here there is all the wiring and schematics that you need to look at the TV microcontroller, the display, um, you can choose between uh, yeah, eight different uh, kinds here. There's the official next gen displays, but he also discovered that they are perhaps rebranded from uh, another cheaper make called TJC, so you could try those. Now I did uh, get a next gen 7 inch display and not even just the enhanced version but apparently I got the intelligent version. Um, and he just makes a very good point out of this here that you have to make sure to get the resistive touch version and not the capacitive version. And that has to do with being in a very electromagnetic noisy field with a Tesla coil, a capacitively coupled touch display will act up weird. So if we take a look at the display that he does suggest, it is the NX8048, so that's 800 times 480 pixels and 7 inches. Now the K here is for the enhanced series 
And that's where I discovered there was a P instead of mine, which is the Intelligent series. And browsing quickly down through the datasheet, I concluded that it is the memory features that the one I got has a lot of more memory and it just supports more detailed uh, 3D animations and fadings and such on the display, so not really something I will use with this. But it was the only screen I could get. So moving on to some of the extensions that you can put on. That is the optical outputs and here is just a collection of the different schematics that you can use in order to add the next gen connection, the microcontroller itself, a MIDI input plug, the 1 to 60 outputs as you need to put some output transistors on in order to drive the LEDs of the transmitters good enough and there's also the Wi-Fi module for the lightsaber, lightsabers. So uh, the user interfaces will just quickly take a glance of them to yeah, look forward to that. That we have the MIDI live mode, that the user interface is pretty much looking like this all over, very straight and streamlined. And yeah, also this uh, lightsaber setup that's uh, something I look forward to, to play with. Now the Synthruptor firmware flashing, first we have to read up this because it is a bit important that we flash the next gen display first and then the TV microcontroller next. And this is in order to take advantage of the next gen using a USB pass through mode through the TV microcontroller. Now there's of course some workarounds to do this, but um, I have downloaded the latest releases, some drivers and the LM Flash programmer from Texas Instruments and he gives a good detail on how to do the driver installation, do the flashing and then do the firmware upload into the next gen display or even how to do it over a micro SD card. So before jumping straight into all that programming let's just quickly check out Max Soitberg's YouTube channel. He has uh, added up some videos on playing it on a just static load on his dual resonant solid state Tesla coil and also some demonstrations on six outputs on LEDs and as well as the light sabers. So be sure to check that out. There is a link down in the description. So before setting myself up to fail, let's just start with the packing out the launch pad here. Just has some paperwork, the board itself, some small paper. A very short Ethernet cable and a short USB cable, so I'll find a bigger one of those. And off to the side that goes, and let's just yeah, pack this thing out together. Antistatic bracelet. Oh well. So let's see, it says that we have to connect to the debug port, so let's just try to plug that into the PC. Well, we get some green LED, that's good. And we should have a uh, Stellaris virtual serial port popping up here. So apparently I did already install the drivers um, previously. I thought I would have to update some more devices. So yeah, that was pretty quick. Now that I have the programs packed out from the zip file, I would like to take the 6-coil bin file here and flash that to the Tiva microcontroller. So I have the LM flash programmer sitting here. It just uh, tells us to take the TMC4C 1294XL, then we don't have to choose those options. Just choose this firmware that we want to use. We want to erase the entire flash, verify, reset MCU after program, and then let's just see what happens. Programming, 50%, 60%, 80%, verifying, that goes pretty fast. And it's passed, and it's done. Now, I do, however, think I'm running into some problems here, because if I look at the product codes put into the files here, we can see that the P version of the display is not mentioned here. And these TFT files are not a program or just a project files for the next gen 
yeah, interface here. So I, if I even try to run a debugger on it and just select the, let's just say NX8048K there, I just get this weird message, TFT file version is not supported. So I will have to reach out to Max and see if I can get some kind of solution to that problem. So as expected, I did run into problems by having this intelligent series uh, touch display. So while we can just yeah, unpack that, it is a quite a much bigger display, but also a more expensive one than the basic or enhanced versions that Max actually recommends to use. But the price difference is down to some 10-15% and it all comes down to what was in stock when I had to buy this. So the price was not that important to me. Paying $10 extra to actually be able to order it, that was not a problem. But he gave me a solution that we will try out. Since this is a, an intelligent version, it has some more properties when you look at the HMI editor. So I opened up the source files for the interface here and just selecting a new device ID over here. It was of course the enhanced version. I selected my intelligent version here. And then we just tried out to do a compile. And we can see here that it has some errors down on the output that we have to replace some invalid picture IDs. So what is different is that all the sliders they now have a second property called a pick one. If we take one I did not change, we can see here it's just in empty space. And the way to fix this error is actually just to copy the value of pick to pick one. So the background and foreground image is the same. So if we try to run compile again, we can see we removed one of these errors for the sliders. So I will try this out and see how that goes. So before firing this up, uh, it is important to note that this small PCB that you get with the next-gen display is for adding a external 5 volt supply, as especially the huge 7-inch display pulls a lot of power, so do not depend on the Tiva microcontroller board actually being able to supply that current. You would probably see it being pulled down and you would get all kinds of issues with this. So this is the connector for the next-gen display. And we have yellow going to PA5 and blue going to PA4 for data connection to the TV microcontroller board, which came with a nice overview here, but also has very nice markups here in these tables directly on the board. So this is actually all you have to do. And then it's just connect up the optical outputs and you are good to go. I have the TV controller connected with power. The display is not connected yet. Now we have to uh, first make the new files, of course, and I did that in the next-gen editor. I compiled a new file with all the changes with the sliders that we talked about. And then we just need to take the TFT file download.exe, which is this. And in order to see if it is COM3 that we want to use, we can just check that out. And that is the Stellaris virtual serial port. So let's just go ahead with that and we select the new file I made here for my intelligent version display. And we should probably just power it up first. So let's see, we have that here. Just have to be a little careful with this uh, 5 volt on these two pins. So. Nice little matrix animation there. The next generation. Okay, so let's just try to press download. See what happens. Okay, so it got connected, starting to download. And we can see that choosing a high baud rate actually uh, makes it speed up the download pretty much. I think Maxi mentioned that it would take about a minute at this speed. But I actually think that this display is actually quite faster than uh, the basic or enhanced versions. So if you can get it at the same price, yeah, go ahead. It wasn't the price that was too um, determining on that point for me.
And it's about done. Update success, restart time. It's pretty easy here in 2020. Everything is by now automated. So there's actually not much we have to do. Except that it does not seem to boot up. I guess it's time to try out the reset switch on the Tiva. Warning, EEPROM contains no valid configuration. Please go to settings and check all values. Well, at least now it starts up. Very nice. So, at first we'll... Okay, settings, what, what is the code? I did not check that out. So here it is, out of the box, the admin password is zero. So, let's just try that. Hello, Master Yoda. Okay, now we can actually just try to jump around in this. Okay, it says we have to look at the settings first. General settings. And there's, there's a resistor file. Okay, that works pretty nice. But still, some of the values w would have on the 5-inch version been so small that you would have liked to use a pen. And that is probably not as... Um, important on the 7 inch screen here as you can see these fields are actually quite big so it's not that much of a problem oh. this is super nice I would really like to just have a long play with this and then jump back and maybe point out some key features to you because as of now, it is a whole lot of documentation to read through to set this up properly. And as you can see, you can do so much different stuff on this. Actually, you can you can make some different uses. So you can actually give it to some Padawan, as it says here, and you can limit your maximum BPS or on time. So you can give a control to somebody novice in Tesla called Control, and they would not make your power electronics blow up. Uh, whoops, how do I get back? It's now connected to the USB serial port. Use this to upload a new firmware or communicate. Hmm. To leave the, you need to power cycle synthropter. Okay. Always good to have a reset button. Okay, dark mode. <laughs> I can see that dark mode is missing some um, some configuration on this intelligent display because this is the graphic that I did change out. So we could probably see that on some other parts. Save, MIDI Live. Yeah. So I would have to fix that in another compile of the next gen display, but very nice that you can actually go down on a dark mode because most of the time you would operate a Tesla coil in the dark. So many settings. Help and info is uh, quite uh, nice that he actually did put in QR codes so you could scan this with your phone and then jump directly to the wiki page where this help to the yeah information on that particular page is. Really um, a lot of thoughts put into this, so as he also said, credits, forum with great people, high voltage forum, unofficial next gen forum. Special thanks to Netsfusher, that's the developer of the Universal Driver 3 that you can also find on high voltage forum. And you can find all his information on GitHub page, developed by Max Soitberg. Before we know that we can trust these numbers on the screen, it's best to hook up it to a oscilloscope and then check out, check out the numbers. So it's now turned off, so let's just try to turn it up to some 100 microseconds. That results at 300 hertz, gives us 3% duty cycle. If we just adjust it so we can see some more peaks here. And we can see we are measuring exactly 3% duty cycle at 100 microseconds and 300 hertz. So that is spot on. Let's see, uh, I think it's, this is just set up for the uh, maximum 1000 Hz, 10% and 100 microseconds. But there seems to be some kind of bug here because I'm not getting anywhere near the 
10% duty cycle, that is the limit, but that could have to do with um, the upper limit to off duty cycle um, time, or the minimum off duty cycle time that was put in under settings. But then again, that is also a pretty wild uh, limit to have 10% duty cycle at 1000 Hz. So let's just try some other numbers here. Perhaps a very high and low duty cycle. Let's take 2%. See, it adjusts up to 1.5, but 20 microseconds. So that's still, uh, it's pretty precise. So I, I think if I compare this to one of my old analog interrupters, this is much more precise. There seems to be a small bit of overshoot there. But that is down to 10 nanoseconds, and that is up to 3.3 .3 volts, and that's 5 volts. But this is unterminated only into the oscilloscope, so that's fine as well. So let's see if we can turn this all the way up. And, and it has this nice uh, delayed um, feature. So when you you get a nice smooth action, not just this hard switch between um, different output variables. So I think this will give a real pleasant sound once you uh, actually try it out on a Tesla coil. To conclude part 2 of the show controller build, where we went through programming the synthropter display and microcontroller, and we did some tests on the oscilloscope, I just have one last test here where I set up my small dual resonant solid state Tesla coil that's just above, just above my head in this picture. And that is the yellow trace measured just after the optical input. And we have the purple trace as the output from the microcontroller. And we have the blue trace as the triggering signal for the output LED that is measured on the negative side due to the NPN transistor used. And as we can see, it seems to have a little lag at the end. So if we just take a look at this oscilloscope picture, we can see that it also has a little rise time, but nothing more than half a microsecond, so we can live with that. If we take a look at the falling out, we can see that the delay on the trailing part here is up to some 3 to 4 microseconds. Again, on a turn-on time of 70 or 100 microseconds, an additional 3 or 4 is not going to make that huge difference. So, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of how to program this interrupter, and I hope you will check out Max's YouTube channel, his GitHub repository, and also the thread on highvoltageforum.net. So please consider supporting my channel or check out some of the merchandise. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, see ya.